Hello Sharks, I am Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com here today with an exciting treat for all of you. We're going to be reviewing a hand that was played by the awesome video blogger Johnny Vibes. Make sure you check out his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Johnny Vibes. I'll have a link below. Johnny Vibes, who those do not know, is a YouTube video blogger discussing poker because this is a poker channel. He has 46,000 subscribers and more coming and subscribing every day. He also is a cash game pro for over 13 years who plays mostly in Vegas and San Diego, and he used to be a DJ. You think we'll have some music on today? We almost never have music on here, besides the elevator music when I ask you what you would do. Let's see what we have. All right. This is a hand that Johnny Vibes played at, I believe, 2-5 No Limit at Sun City Card Club in El Paso. We're playing about $1,000 deep, so 200 big blinds deep. Let's get right to it. So we find ourselves in an interesting spot versus Taylor the Sicko on our left. Could you imagine being named Taylor the Sicko? You think the Sicko gets to run a lot of bluffs? It's tough because if you're known to be the Sicko, you should probably not bluff all that often because they think you're going to be a Sicko. But you get the name being a, uh, the Sicko because you ran a lot of bluffs. Kind of tough. You put yourself in a leveling scenario right off the bat. Maybe that's ideal, maybe not. We open it up with Ace Jack off suit under the gun for $20. Sure. Taylor calls in early position and Scarf calls on the button. Ah, he, his name's the Scarf because he has a scarf. We go three ways to a flop of Jack 9-7. Sometimes against weaker opponents, I'll just bet here. But against tough players like Taylor and Scarf, we want to mix and lean towards checking to protect our flop check range. This is a spot where I completely agree that against generally straightforward players who are not going to put you in tough spots ever, you probably just want to bet, right? You just want to bet with what is very likely the best hand. They're going to call it a lot of worse hands and you extract value. But this board, Jack-9-7, is amazing for uh, maybe Taylor the Sicko, depending on how big of a Sicko he is. Is he calling 10-8 suited pre-flop, 9-7 suited? I don't know. Um, but it's also especially good for Scarf. In this scenario, Scarf should have all of the nuts in this scenario pretty much so you have to be very cautious in this spot you are going to want to check and see what develops you may want to put in the check raise sometimes check call either play is perfectly viable perfectly fine um, i think this is probably a hand you should lean towards check calling with playing very deep stacked and essentially play it like a decently strong marginal made hand if you are unfamiliar with the idea of how you want to be playing out of position multi-way definitely check out pokercoaching.com. We're having a sale right now for Memorial Day. You can check it out at pokercoaching.com slash memorial. And I have a cash game quiz for you to take. Make sure you go there to ensure you are not making errors when you are playing cash games. Check it out at pokercoaching.com slash cash quiz. All right, so we check. If we only check medium strength hands and give ups, we become unbalanced. And on certain runouts, we will lack board coverage, which could allow our opponents in position to exploit us. So we check here. I'll also say before we move forward that if you know Taylor the Sicko really likes to bet when check two and you think Scarf is kind of aggressive, it's a great spot to just check and give them a chance to bluff with some hands that may not normally fit in a GTO bluffing range. So you essentially let them over bluff if that is what they're inclined to do. Taylor bets 40. Scarf folds on the button and it's back to us and we make the call. The turn is... If you think... Taylor is going to play very well if you check raise. He's going to fold out a lot of his garbage. You probably want to check call. If you think he's going to go insane and just blast it all in with King-10 offsuit, then you should definitely just check raise and play for all your money. Um, that said, I, I think check calling is very nice, especially if your opponent will think you have a lot of marginal made hands like pocket 10s, pocket 8s, ace-9 suited, right? Like hands that will fold to additional aggression. And the plan with our hand is to not fold to additional aggression, of course. The king of hearts. After it checks through in the river comes the queen of diamonds. Slow down, slow down, Johnny Vibe. Slow down. Okay. Turns the king of hearts. Should we consider leading here? I think we definitely have some flush draws in our range. I think it's actually very viable. We also have a hand like king queen on the turn. Would you want to lead that? Eh, probably not. Look, I typically don't do a whole lot of leading when deep stacked because typically when you check call, you're going to be somewhat capped. That said, very often when you are playing very deep stacked, that's not the case. If you look at the GTO strategy in this spot, it's going to be incredibly mixed where sometimes you're betting the flush draw, sometimes you're checking. And you're, it puts your opponent in a scenario where they really just have no clue what's going on, right? And it seems like Johnny Vibes is working to do that by checking hands. 
like this. So look, I don't think you should lead, but you should always at least consider it when the turn is really, really, really reasonable for your range. Leading's a strategy mostly using your shallow stack, though, not so often when you're deep stack. So I like the turn check. Check check makes me think Taylor has a lot of hands with showdown value. What's that going to be? It's going to be a hand like a king. It's going to be a hand like a jack. Maybe a hand like a nine. You know, marginal made hands. So this is a spot where on the river, I like checking. When it goes check, check, we actually win some portion of the time. Not a lot, but some. So I, I think checking is reasonable. Should we just bet and turn our hand into a bluff? I think absolutely not. It's pretty easy for Taylor to have a 10 that's just easily going to call, right? It's also pretty easy for him to have a king or a queen that may decide to hero call. So this is a spot where I think the play is definitely just to check. Go ahead and make another check. I still play on this card. If you're not in the hand, just, just chop the box. Ooh, $100 bet. Two-thirds pot. I want you to take a second and consider what you would do in the scenario. If you did not already take the cash game quiz, make sure you do it at pokercoaching.com slash cash quiz. And we're going to do one right now. In this spot, what should we do? We're playing about $900 behind, facing the $100 bet on the river with our bad bluff catcher. Should we fold? Should we call Taylor the sicko? Because he's a sicko. Should we raise small, the $250? Or should we rip it all in and go insane? I want you to pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right, fun spot, fun spot, fun spot. Because at this point, when Taylor bets the river, he either has just a total air ball, which is kind of hard for him to have because what could he have? He bet into two people on the flop, right? So at this point, he has likely something like two pair or better and very likely a straight, maybe king queen. Um, notice there are a lot of tens he could have. He could easily bet jack 10 on the flop, king 10, queen 10, right? He could certainly bet all those on the flop. Queen 10 probably bets the turn. Interestingly enough, he probably does not have a lot of flushes, though. Because if you think about it, he's going to bet the flop with flush draws. And when he turns a flush, he's just going to keep betting, right? Just to get a lot of money in against um, Johnny's likely reasonable hand. So this is a spot where I don't think he actually has a whole lot of flushes. So given he doesn't have a whole lot of flushes, and we block the Ace of Hearts, and I don't think we can reasonably hero call with this, I think it actually becomes a very, very reasonable raise now when we raise here what cards do we want to have i think we want to block the hands that can call our raise right so every once in a while taylor could take the line with enough flush but obviously can't have that notice there really aren't a ton of flushes even available and like i said he probably wouldn't play them this way to begin with so what are we trying to get him to fold we're trying to get him to fold two pair or a straight do your opponents fold straights here i'm sure you're gonna tell me in the comment section in about Four seconds. Nobody folds a straight to me in my games. No one folds a straight because I know how they play and they always call it a straight here, even though they lose to my entire value raising range because they're terrible. Okay, sure. But remember, Taylor the sicko is presumably a sicko. He's presumably good at poker. He's going to be able to look at the board and see there's three hearts out there and look at his hand and see he has jack 10 of diamonds and realize he does not have the nuts. Okay? If he's capable of this, I definitely like the idea of putting in a big raise, an all in raise. I do not like a small raise here to 250 because straights are just going to say, ah, brutal, what are you going to do? I got to call. Whenever you rip it all in, though, you may even be able to get a hand like weird 6-5 of hearts to fold because they're not blocking any of the relevant flush cards. The question is, would Johnny Vibes actually take this line with a flush? Presumably the nut flush. Some of your opponents will take it a lot, looking to be tricky and trappy. Some of your opponents will literally never take this line, though. And if your opponent's literally never going to take this line, then gobble it up with the, with the straight and the bad flushes, right? But if your opponents are going to be playing good, strong GTO poker where they are protecting all of their ranges, then it's a pretty bad spot with a straight when you get check raise here. You probably want to call whenever you have a random heart in your hand, right? Because then you block some of the flushes, but really you just want to have the ace of hearts. Even the ace of hearts and the 10 in your hand <laughs> becomes a pretty sweet spot to find the call, right? Let's see what happens. Let's see what Johnny does. Does he just find the fold? This is such a terrible... Fold's fine too. I don't, I don't hate fold run out for our specific hand so when taylor bets the hundred dollars it's clear that we don't have the best hand we do however block the nut flush yes, and with him it. checking back the turn 
it's going to be extremely unlikely that he himself holds a flush. So in my opinion, he's capped at straights here. And we have just enough in our stack to make a hero call with a straight problematic. We also would play our nut flushes like this the majority of the time. So far, I love everything Johnny said. I would play my nut flushes like this the majority of the time. Is that true? Not entirely sure. Does Taylor know that? Not entirely sure. First thing I see, I hear that's like maybe, maybe not accurate. It could be accurate, right? But maybe not accurate. After checking the flop, so in theory, if... Remember, Johnny would have had to check call the flop with a flush draw. Presumably the ace high flush draw, which you could do sometimes, right? Check the turn. And when it check, check, remember. And then he has to also check it on the river. Y you got to realize your range gets split every time you take these decisions because you probably or in each of these decision points, because you would bet some of your flush draws on the flop. You'd also bet some of them on the river, right? So I'm not entirely sure he plays all of his flushes this way or all of his ace-high flushes this way all the time. Maybe he does. Something to consider. You may have fewer combinations of these in your range than you may think, to the point that you can't just check-raise every single ace of hearts X in your range. Feels like it's time to be a hero. I like being like No nudity on YouTube, please. No nudity. All in. I love it. I love it. I told you you made a smart check on the turn. I told you you made a smart check on the turn. It That just rolled out of his mouth a little too smoothly. I think Johnny Vise may be a table talker who's a little too smooth. Table talkers are fun. I will say, whenever people can just throw out a nice casual sentence, I told you it was a good check on the turn. That's strong. I like it. What does this say? Drake. What is a Drake? Like a like a, a dragon? A dragon is playing in the background. Turned volume up so YouTube wouldn't flag a copyrighted song. I have no music on this channel besides elevator music, so uh, I don't even know what this means. Show him. Thank God. Show him. Boom! Take that, sicko Taylor. All right, that's going to be it for today. This was a fun hand. I like this hand, Johnny Vibes. Keep up the great work. Make sure you head over there and subscribe to his channel. Also, if you like this video, click like and subscribe below. Like I said, if you have a favorite poker video blogger, I want to highlight them and show them off to everyone here to help spread the good word of the people out there doing the good work. So make sure you leave a comment below with a fun hand that they played. They can win it, they can lose it, they can play it great, they can play it poorly, whatever you want to do. Leave a link to it below with a timestamp and I will check it out. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. My challenge to all of you is get to the river in a spot like Johnny Vibes and instead of just folding, or even worse, making the call, rip it all in. See what happens. If it's good. This is for entertainment purposes only. This is not financial advice. Goodbye. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Are we going to get sued? No? Okay. Entertainment purposes only. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And as a thank you, I'm going to channel all of my poker knowledge into your brain right now. Oh, wait, that didn't work. Sorry, you're going to have to keep studying. Go ahead and click the subscribe button right here, and I'll see you in the next video.